uh, this car lighting, surprisingly good. Yeah, yeah you look really good. good. Yeah. Takes years off your life. You look young. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Post shower. Unlike oh, today, which I probably think today added years, took to years life. off my yeah. life. That's what happened. <laughs> Okay, Martin, first of all, thanks for, thanks for joining us here in the drop zone. Um, I want to ask you where you are on the happy to sad o meter coming off today's final round. Yeah, good question. It, it really is the, um, it's sort of a curse of humanity that our expectations just are like this ultimate sliding ruler, you know, where at the start of the week, if you told me I'd finished T5, I would have been just ecstatic but then you know with a 30 foot birdie putt on 17 green i think t5 doesn't sound so good so um overall i kind of try to maintain the perspective of thinking hey this was an unbelievable week i had a chance to win on the pg tour um you know ultimately that's all you can ask for you know but you know there is that part of me that's bummed out about the last couple holes yeah i mean you can definitely be honest with with us we understand the duality there um at what point in the week did you start to feel like hey this feels different than you know the run that you've been on recently yeah it's funny it was kind of a funky week because the first day i only played i think it was maybe uh 12 holes or 11 mm -hmm. holes because of rain delay yeah i was doing quite well i was I think a few under at that point, but you know, just early in the week. And then Friday, I really played great over the last, you know, the second round and the conclusion of the first. So it, it kind of took me by surprise. It was like, it went from, Hey, that was a good start to my round to I'm 10 under and leading the golf tournament. <laughs> so it happened really fast, but yeah, I mean, you know, it, it, it really can happen that fast. Obviously, you know, going into the weekend, I, I was excited to try to, you know, keep playing well. And that course is just so brutal that, you know, it wasn't imminently in the cards to do that. Like it was, you know, the first couple of days where it was so smooth, but um, yeah, you know, it was a great effort. But then at some point, Maybe on the 11th hole today, you make a 71 footer. I need to know what's going through your head when that putt drops. Like what is happening? Oh man. I mean, that was definitely the highlight of the day. Um, you know, it, it, the greens are so fast on this course that you're just trying to lag it up there on literally anything outside of like 12 feet, you know? Yeah. And that was like a 70 foot downhill. I mean, it was like, the ultimate just please get it within three feet or even five feet it would be totally fine and uh yeah i just rolled it down there and once in a while it randomly goes in and i mean it was really cool to obviously have the crowd and just to at that point i forget exactly where i was in the standings or whatever but i think i i was you know leading or that putt made me lead yeah. so it was yeah. i mean it was just yeah a really cool moment for sure I need to know if, if your like right arm is sore from raising it so much to the crowd because <laughs> you, you made back to back 30 footers on the front nine and I just kept seeing you like really just enjoying it. And, uh, it felt like you had the crowd behind you and everyone's like, Holy cow, like this guy's, this guy's going to do it today. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? This makes me think I need like a signature move, you know, <laughs> I think you have one. I think it's that point. I think you're, you've got that like skyward point. People are going to think you're very religious. Yeah. <laughs> and, true. Uh, yeah. Many just an pointing athlete to the heavens. Skyward point. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I, I think I'm going to, that might be my uh, project of the off season is trying to develop a uh, signature move when I make a, a big putt like that. Um, yeah, I don't know. What do you guys think? What's what are my options? I could do like a, a little salute to the crowd, or well, you know, aren't you a Steph Curry fan? The fist pump. Aren't you a Steph fan? Steph Curry. Maybe you start doing what he does when he makes a three. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a little out of context, but maybe we can find a golf <laughs> version of it. <laughs> that was good, Martin. You didn't even come close to answering the question. You are ready for the big time. Oh yeah, what was the question again? <laughs> I don't know, but uh, how aware were you of your position on the leaderboard? Did you know that you were winning? Did you like? Are there a lot of scoreboards out there that you kept checking? 
Uh, there were a shockingly low amount of scoreboards I found. Like it was, it was like every handful of holes. I really didn't know what was going on, but honestly, as every person who's ever, you know, played a sport will tell you, it's like, you're just trying to do your best and the scoreboard doesn't really matter unless it's a very specific situation, like on the last couple of holes or something like that. So at that point it was like, I'm just out here trying to make pars and, you know, get 71 footers within five feet and or potentially into the cup. So, yeah, I mean, that's that's all I was doing. But I, I didn't really know. I knew I was up there, and then I made a couple birdies. And and at that point, I think I saw a leaderboard, and I saw I was leading. But, you know, on the PGA Tour and at that course where bogeys are, like, the easiest thing to make, you know, it was it was definitely, uh, you know, I knew it, it, I needed to play well going in to, to, to have a chance. I got good news. You, you're going to gain 800, 800 spots in the world golf ranking. Fantastic. <laughs> uh, in my top, in my top 300. Not quite. Um, you're going to, you're going to be right. Let's around not get greedy here, Martin. <laughs> <laughs> bit by bit. Hey, I'm, I'm gunning for that top 300 baby. Take us through the emotional roller coaster, though. That was this week. I mean, there were plenty of stats being thrown around in the broadcast, not all of them particularly flattering towards your golf game and your PGA tour performance. Obviously you've been playing golf in a very high level, but not as high level as some of your peers. Um, so what does it feel like, first of all, to not just make a cut, which is obviously a very difficult thing to do, but then make a cut and be in this position to change your, your year and your career. Yeah, it's funny you mentioned that about – I had a few people text me saying that – I guess it, they didn't even say what people were saying about how I missed a million cuts or whatever, but they just seemed aggrieved that, like, they were, you know, basically just just disparaging my, my golfing name, you know? Mm -hmm. But from my standpoint, it, it does – that stuff doesn't matter at all. I mean, I'm – I have status this year and I've won on tour before. And so, you know, my only goal is just to get back to a point where I'm playing well and, you know, potentially contending. And this week was like, you know, a best case scenario where it was a perfect course for me and I played really well. And, you know, it ended up, I ended up having a chance, which, you know, for me is a, you know, that's, that's a huge win for me just to be up there and, have a top five and contend. What what was different though? I mean, like you you putted like crazy, four hundred and eighty feet of made putts, uh, but you also you you struck it really well. And I would say maybe that was the biggest difference for you. Like on Friday, you hit sixteen greens. Um, is there something in your swing that you've been working on that you've been working toward, or like is there anything different than Martin Trainer of two months ago? Yeah, I mean, I won't bore you with the. Uh mechanical details of what no, i'm doing please do. that's what we want <laughs> well i don't even know how to explain it really uh but basically you know there's been this one move which i've affectionately called uh affectionately called the death move with a bunch of my friends basically where you know the face is wide open and i just hit a huge push essentially and you know, finding a counter to that move, which is caused by a series of events in my swing prior to impact. Um, you know, basically I was able to find a counter to that by kind of staying low and keeping my left shoulder low, you know, during the backswing and also through impact. And that kind of allowed me to, to hit the ball straight and kind of like recapture what most guys out here do which is you know sort of have control over their golf ball and once I was able to do that you know and then of course make all those putts that was just the right combination between that and this golf course which suits me pretty well as a long hitter that was a good combo for me this week now is your caddy driving you right now no I I'm currently <laughs> in the car with Emily and okay. uh she unfortunately during the entirety of this podcast has been struggling to find parking for our dinner. Well, that makes it for a really stressful podcast. Yeah, right, definitely. Well, but I got one last question for you. Now. 
one last question for me is you have a guy, uh, Zach Smith, that's been on the bag. I'm not sure how long he's been caddying for you past few months or half year or so. And you got two of us who have caddied for you in the past. What's the, what, what's he got that's better than us? <laughs> um, he has more experience than you guys, <laughs> but, um, yeah, he, he's, he also shows up the earliest I've ever seen anyone show up to a golf course. Like he's Love literally that. there just hours before I have to tell him to just like stop <laughs> coming so early and just like, you know, lead your own life. Um, but yeah, I mean, look, you guys are, you guys are legendary caddies. <laughs> That's what an occasion to be able to do a podcast with two of the greats, you know? <laughs> yeah. It must be a real honor for you, Martin. That's great. Oh, uh, I got a couple more for you. Sean said he was going to let you go, but I'm not quite ready. Um, I want you to explain like, again, what you're feeling right now. You've got this fifth place finish under your belt early in this new season, a season. This is like your free agency year. You know, this is like Vince Carter free agency year needs a, needs a big showing. Um, like, do you feel relieved? Do you feel excited? Do you feel frustrated? What's going on in your brain? Um, certainly a little bit relieved that I have a good finish under my belt, obviously. Um, you mentioned, you know, this is, I have full status this year, but, um, unlike the last couple of years, you know, I need to play well to stay out here. And that's something that people think about often, you know, and never really talk about because they want to be optimistic and just assume that things are going to go well. But the reality is, you know, it, it's hard to do that. Um, but playing this well I think not only is this week in and of itself good for my own year but I think it what I figured out this week with my swing with my putting I mean I think those things will hopefully fingers crossed allow me to be consistent moving forward doesn't mean literally every week but hopefully these types of performances can become you know a little more frequent and um, you know I think that is probably the more valuable thing to me rather than the actual finish itself. Was there any particularly emotional moment out there um, either after the round or, or moment during the week that you'll really remember when you look back at this week? That putt on 11 was really cool, but you know, I'm also proud that I played well today, you know, after yesterday, you know, I didn't hit the ball very well yesterday and, and sort of scraped by, made some good saves to have a chance today. And then I came out and played really well and made some great putts. And so, you know, that just tells me that moving forward, I, I have a chance and that perhaps more of these weeks are coming. And, you know, that puts my mind at ease, I think, a little bit for the future. All right. And last thing. What is it about you that can flip that switch? Like, why is it that when you see the top of the leaderboard, you just start to see red and you like charge for the number one spot? Why is it all or nothing with you? Yeah, I don't know. It's uh, it's quite inexplicable to be honest. I mean, I think it maybe speaks to kind of like the the nature of golf that you know, if you do find something in your swing, if you you know start really having control of your ball flight and, you know, being able to, you know, basically hit it straight off the tee and hit good iron shots and putt well, all of those things kind of like add up. So I guess in, in the times that I've played extremely well, I've been able to do all of those things well at the same time, obviously, sort of by definition, that's what you have to do. But I don't know, man. I some, Somehow when I play well, it seems to go really well, so I'll take it. What's All for right, dinner? We'll keep it up. Yeah, what is for dinner tonight? Uh, we are in for a treat. We're going to Mastro's, and uh, we are going to crush a butter cake, which is one of the most <laughs> underrated things at Mastro's, as discovered by uh, my girlfriend, Emily, here. All right, well, Lock shout on. out to Emily. Shout out to Martin Trainer. We were spreading the good word all week. Certainly of... Uh, you have no no more no two people who believe more in the trainer train than these two right here. So we appreciate you coming on. 
Well, you're biased because you've caddied for me, so vested interest. But thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I, I do appreciate it. All right, man. Thanks, Martin. We really appreciate you. Hi, Emily. Bye. <laughs> I was like, is she, she like said a- hello. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. Thanks, dude. Have a good dinner. Congratulations. All right. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. We'll talk to you later. All right. Talk to you later.